Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, before we get into this video, please make sure you head on down to Instagram and follow us on our official Instagram page at hookah anonymous underscore. All right, we're able to be a little more explicit, a little more uncensored, and share content freely without running the risk of having our channel terminated. So, once again, Make sure you head on down to Instagram and follow us on our official Instagram page at Uka Anonymous underscore. All right. Now, let's get into what you guys came here to see. Now, it's getting crazy out here, y'all. And it seems like everyone is dropping like flies. We bring some unfortunate news today as we have to say rest in peace to Florida rapper 350 Heen. 350 Heen was shot and killed outside of his own mixtape release party in his own hometown of Lakeland, Florida. One suspect is now in custody and the community of Lakeland, Florida is in shambles as 350 Heen was the first rapper from the area to make it as far as he did in the music industry being signed to a label. Raheem Bacon aka 350 Heen was only 25 years old at the time of his death when he was shot and killed Friday, July 28th, 2023. We're going to get into what happened and what a witness on the scene have said as the witness was also the one who took 350 Heen to the hospital. Before we get into all that, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you aren't already so you can stay updated with what's going on in the world today. Now here's what happened to 350 Heen, the fatal night that he was shot and killed. Now 25 year old Raheem Bacon aka 350 Heen was an upcoming rapper straight out of Lakeland, Florida. He was buzzing off his songs such as Patience, Turn Nothing Into Something, Caught Up in Scat Day. Heen was also the biological brother of former NBA star Dwayne Bacon who was playing for the Charlotte Hornets in Orlando Magic before crossing over to overseas to play basketball. Although both brothers had two different passions, they would support each other's career with one being involved in music and the other being involved in basketball. Now unfortunately, once things began looking up for Raheem, his life would be cut short on a night he was supposed to be celebrating his actual success. Now on July 28, 2023, Heem would be celebrating his latest project called Taking Chances 3 at Jade Fox Lounge on 3010 Lakeland Highlands Road. Ironically, his own brother Dwayne was the host of the event. It was around 1.51 a.m. when police would get calls concerning a shootout that transpired where two people were victims. One was Raheem and the other was a 48-year-old lady who was said to be in critical condition but is expected to survive. Raheem was rushed to Lakeland Regional Health Medical Center by a private vehicle but was pronounced dead upon arrival. As of right now, there's no real story as to what happened and why shots rang out, but a 23-year-old suspect by the name of Jamila Johnson was quickly taken into custody after a firearm was found on the scene. As of right now, there's no telling if she is the confirmed suspect or maybe just a person who had a weapon on the scene. However, Jamila would be charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, according to authorities, due to her criminal background. I'm assuming after minor investigations, her fingerprints on the weapon came up and she was quickly arrested because authorities say that the firearm was also reported stolen back in 2015. But once again, keep in mind that it's not confirmed that Jamila was the one that shot and killed 350 Heen. The firearm is just all they have to go off of at this time. Now Jamila could have been a friend of Heem's who was shooting back in his defense during the altercation or the weapon could have dropped while she was trying to scatter or she actually could be the suspect in the shooting. Who knows? But in due time, investigations will tell us what's going on as they update us. Now, a witness who is said to be the one in the private vehicle that actually rushed him to the hospital took to Facebook to speak on a traumatic event. The witness explains how he ended up taking him to the hospital where he ultimately succumbed to his injuries. In a Facebook post, the witness said, quote, For those that didn't know, I was the one to transport bro to the hospital. There was also a family member to assist while I was driving. Last night was tragic. I hadn't been in J. Fox parking lot no more than 10 minutes before it all happened. Imagine sitting in your car hearing gunshots, ducking down, and happen to look up and see a familiar face staggering towards you and just drops right beside your drive door, gunshot wounded. 
The first person I called was his dad to let him know I got him. I tried to get him to LRMC soon as I could, running every red light there was, but the homie didn't make it in the end. This one left a tattoo for life because it's something I'm never going to forget. RP Heem 350. Now, it's looking like the witness is definitely traumatized by what they saw. Um, imagine seeing someone alive one minute only to hear that they're gone in the next. Right? Plus, with him actually being the one that actually helped. You know, thank God for the witness, man. Now, we've been told that prior to the event, he was promoting the event by posting it all over Instagram, Facebook, social media, period, about the release party. And people think that's where he went wrong because that's what allowed him to become an easy target. And as y'all know how the old slogan goes, it be your own people that don't want to see you do good. Right? Boozy Ab went viral for telling artists to stay out of their own hometowns because that's the easiest place to get killed, unfortunately, when they should be the ones celebrating you the most. But as we continue to hear these stories, it's really seeming as if your own hometown love you only until you actually become successful, then that's when they hate you again. Right? And honestly, that may have been his downfall. Promoting your event is cool as an artist. But if you're going to do something like that, I personally feel you must be heavily protected. Um, higher security. Um, have people around you that are permitted to carry, you know, weapons. Because you're basically giving out your whereabouts, your location, and you being put at a disadvantage because now you're welcoming not only your ops, but people who you may have pissed off unknowingly that want to do harm to you and you don't even know they existed. You know, how do you defend that? How do you defend yourself against somebody who you don't even know that you have beef with and they may have a problem with you, right? And honestly, I'm not big on 350 Heem, so I'm not sure if he was a hated guy with a lot of ops or whatever, but clearly somebody wanted him and they got him. The only thing I would like to know is what actually happened. All the reports that came out, nobody have any specific reports on what actually transpired or what led to him getting shot. Um, it's a whole bunch of people that say they are witnesses that was there that say they just heard gunshots. Uh, they seen people running, but nobody's saying what actually transpired. What led to him out of all people getting shot at his own event? You know, all the reports that came out, you just hear people saying the same thing. And it's crazy because was it an argument? Was it a hit? Was it a drive-by? Was it a mistake? Somebody shot him by mistake? Somebody that was on his his team? What was it? Because it was his event. How you get killed at your own event, man? Who was around him that even allowed someone to get that close to him without any consequences? You know, it's just a bunch of questions, not to mention he lost his life on the 30th, but for some reason, it's August 2nd, and it's just now, you know, hitting headlines, and everybody's making such a big deal about it. I don't know why, but like I said, it happened a couple days ago, but now it's just starting to circulate. Um, anyway, as more information come out concerning this case, I'll keep you guys updated as much as I can. As for now, rest in peace, 350 Heem. Condolences go to his family, and may he rest in peace. Y'all drop in the comments and let me know what y'all think about this. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. And remember, as long as you keep on watching, I'm going to keep on dropping. And I'm out.